Hi, I'm John Pickett, Community Advocate with IT World Canada. Welcome to this broadcast of Frankly Speaking at Your Desk. Today we're going to be talking about identity management, and I'm pleased to be able to welcome two experts who can speak not only from uh, the experience of implementing ID management and security governance through their own organization, Sun Microsystems, but also as evangelists for good governance and for identity management through their customer base and through sessions like this. Michelle Dennedy is Chief Governance Officer Cloud Computing with Sun Microsystems. Mark Dixon is Chief Identity Officer at North American Software Line of Business with Sun Microsystems. So for the purpose of this discussion, what constitutes identity? Well, you need to really start from each of us as a human being has a core identity that kind of defines who we really are. But really, when we talk about IT, it is how do we as individuals interact with information systems? How do we get access to uh, systems and applications and data that are important to us? And the digital identity and the credentials that we present to be a, uh, to gain access to that. And so identity management are the processes and technology that allow us to manage and to uh, allow access to these information systems. So how is a company going to benefit from the implementation of ID management? Is there an ROI argument to be made? Well, there's many ways that you can benefit. Some of the, the key areas are in improving efficiency of operations, reduction of costs, um, improvement of security and privacy, and then also being in compliance with either internal or external regulatory requirements. But another area that some people overlook is the being able to, uh, by leveraging identity, connect better with your customers and those people you do business with so that you can improve your business. And in that way, identity becomes a, a lever or an enabler for better business. Yeah, I think um, identities, especially now that um, distributed computing is a reality, are really the new currency. So information about people, about customers, about vendors, about competitors even, and how you manage that particular asset is really the way to, to innovate and to grow and sustain your business. So it's, it's something that I believe is akin to currency. So when you invest in an identity management strategy and life cycle play, you're really investing in a core asset that's key to your um, business or government agency. What are the main elements of an ID management system? The basic foundation for identity management system is the, the repositories where you keep your identity information and the related attributes of that, whether that be in a directory or a database or multiples of those. So this repository for identity information. Then there are the functions that allow you to administer uh, the identity information, assign uh, security credentials, and provision user accounts in the systems that, to which you're granting access. And so you're managing the privileges that are granted to people for access to those systems. The third element is being able to audit that and appropriately uh, assure that when you're assigning privileges, you're doing it in accordance with accepted audit policy. And then after the fact, being able to demonstrate that your systems are continuing to be in compliance with audit policy. Then the final thing is the enforcement of the identity and security policy, of the authentication of individuals when they present their identity credentials, and the authorization of them to uh, reach the uh, systems and applications they need. This may extend to the uh, authorization of information flow or web services between systems um, as you are tying systems together. Yeah, and I think I think the technical complement of, of issues that Mark is talking about really points to what I think is key here, which is it's about people, process, and technology. So all of those, those areas and those nuances of identity management are only effective and incredibly effective if they're tied closely to the people and the processes. So you understand what your, your business or governmental objective is, and then you really leverage mm -hmm. each of these textured pieces of technology underneath that. 
So who should be involved in the planning of policies and practices around ID management? It's, um, it's an interesting question. I think identity um, can sometimes be thought as only an IT infrastructure problem, as the cost center problem, rather than what I think it really should be. If you start with people and process and then get to technology, there's a business problem you're trying to solve. So whoever is that business owner that's going to either benefit or be the beneficiary of reduced risk based on the, the information profile that you're trying to create, that person is absolutely a key stakeholder. So I think that's the, the immediate partner with IT. Um, and then I think you need to really think very creatively about who else are your stakeholders and partners. So human resources, for example, can help define what your roles are. Who, who are your users? Who are your employees? Who are the, the vendors? And, and what does that interface look like can often be defined by your human resources and probably already has been done. So thinking creatively and very broadly about who the stakeholders is, is very effective. And as Michelle points out, by its very nature, identity management has to do with multiple stakeholders, both within your organization and your uh, partners and customers, and need to make sure both in the planning and in the governance of identity management strategy, we include those various stakeholders and make sure that the identity management uh, process is aligned with the business objectives and goals in the organization. These can be complex issues. Most companies have um, islands of authentication and authorization spread across networks and applications. How do you move from move the responsibility from those individual applications up to an enterprise level? And when you talk about individual applications, some of those are developed within your own organization and some are purchased off the shelf. Of those that you've developed, you can go through a process over time of uh, rather than doing the authentication and authorization within each application to depending on a more standardized uh, security system to provide that uh, function, uh, cooperation with the vendors of uh, say an ERP system or a CRM system, uh, often uh, the state of the art in identity management systems, there are connectors or adapters to those systems that allow you to provision them automatically, both for the user accounts and the, uh, for the roles and responsibilities in those applications. But it also takes kind of a mindset for the company, aside from the technology, to be able to say, we're going to get the benefits of this centralized system. It will be more secure. It will have a specific financial benefit to our company, and that will compensate for the work to connect each of these systems to uh, the overall information or identity system. And there's a there's a trade off that works there as well. So. You don't want everything so tightly coupled that if one system fails, they all fail. Um, and, but at the same time, as Mark says, you want a certain layer of control and centralization so that you actually know what the, the strategy and the profile looks like. So you have secure sign-on um, for appropriate clusters of types of applications, and yet you're able to sever and turn things on and off where appropriate so that the whole system isn't a, an all or nothing fail. And what's the role of IT in this? Well, certainly IT is the, the key organization for planning and implementing the different uh, components within the system. However, if uh, an identity system gets keyholed as an IT-only project, and many times it's doomed to fail, again, because of the broad stakeholder base and the fact that it does impact many parts of the company. It really needs to be a business strategy. I like to call it a journey rather than individual project one that you establish a strategy, a plan, and then implement over time, with IT certainly being the implementer of that. But the people who are leading IT need to elevate their thinking to say, how do we align with the business objectives? And that will make them better successful, even though that is not just a purely technology role at that mm -hmm. time. I think, as, as Mark is saying, I think the role of the IT professional has, has evolved. It used to be that you were Jack and the Magic Bean Sprout, and something magical would happen in the server room, and, and no one in the business really understood what was going on behind the curtain. We all now experience technology all the time, and our stakeholders have an increasing appetite for information and on time and uptime. Mm -hmm. so, for the IT professional to be more and more successful today, I think they are, their 
thinking needs to be more strategic, as Mark says, and the business people need to understand a bit more about what's going on behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And I think both of these things we're seeing in the marketplace today, of this evolution of IT being closer and closer to the strategic table. And as the IT people uh, align themselves more closely with business, business people need to see IT as a strategic weapon for their business, not just a cost center. Absolutely. Are there new risks involved? I mean, when you're moving to a, a centralized management of identity, potentially if that system is compromised, then it's compromised for all applications rather than just an individual one. How do you address those concerns? The example that's often given is uh, it used to be before a centralized uh, identity management system that someone would have a dozen post-it notes around their, uh, their PC with all their username and passwords on them. If you implement a standardized password, uh, you may get rid of all of them, but it allows one set of credentials, allows you access to multiple systems. So the risk is that through that one area, you can compromise the whole system. However, I think it's proven that having one password that's easy to uh, remember is much more inherently secure and will not be compromised as much as having multiple ones and you get the benefit of increased security and increased convenience for your people at the same time. So the, the benefits typically will outweigh the theoretical disadvantages of having a single attack vector. Mm -hmm. I also think it's a mistake that, that many of us make, that the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and I think sometimes, and actually there's a, a, a case in point of this where a, a very old system was controlling the traffic light timing in Virginia, and, and that very old system had always, always worked, so no one replaced it. They had one identity management strategy, one person who knew how to fix the thing. Well, that one person retired and the identity broke down, and you saw a, a huge traffic snarls. Um, so I think that, that quietness in our data centers where we know that Joe has, has his hand on this one application and it's mission critical, so don't touch it, it, it's definitely something to consider when you move that system into a more modernized um, identity management and asset management strategy. So there is a risk when that movement happens. However, I think the results um, in the long term create a sustainable environment rather than depending and hoping and praying that nothing goes wrong with legacy. This has been a broadcast of Frankly Speaking at Your Desk. Today we've been talking about identity management with my guests, Michelle Dennedy and Mark Dixon of Sun Microsystems. Thanks for joining us.